Joe Lysett's one of the funniest comedians on planet Earth, but there's nothing funny about unreal lives. This will be his toughest interview to date. Well, today is a great opportunity to set the record straight. Greg is one of the great interviewers. He's done some of the most iconic interviews of the last five months. Wish me luck. Hopefully I'll be okay. Joe Lysett, welcome to Unreal Lives. Thank you, Greg James. Let's go back to the start. You didn't always want to be a comedian. You actually had quite a big ambition to be an inventor. Yes, I did. That's, you've done your research. Who were some of the inventors <clears throat> that you really related to and really admired when you were growing up? Um, gosh, the names fall from the mind now. What are some of the items that you use today that you are thankful that exist? Chairs. Uh, love chairs, and that was in, I think, I think it's um, Simon Chair was the guy that invented the chair uh, back in 1937. Mm. Before that, everyone was just like, they had much better muscles here. How, how were they before chairs, pre-chair? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> like just like that. It's crazy. It's, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny to think of these days that that's... Thank God for Simon Chair. So I wanted to follow in the footsteps of Simon Chair yeah. and invite, invent my own um, uh, something. something. Well, here we actually have some of the somethings that you invented. Talk us through this. That's um, a watch. Uh, but um, what I realised is that um, the strap was quite... Um, didn't fit everyone's wrist and also it didn't tell the time. Mm. There was another really good use for it, which was that you could uh, make pastry into um, neat shapes. So okay. I since discovered that actually the, it was already invented though and they had loads of them in Lakeland. But Charity work is a very big part of your career as mm. well. You started the Joe Lysett Foundation a couple mm. of years ago. Yes. It's a, a, a campaign mainly focused on dolphins, isn't it? And, um, mm. and eradicating them. Yes. From the world. Why did you decide to get rid of them all? Uh, look at them. Not a care in the world. They've done nothing to solve uh, starvation. Just going about flapping about eating fish. Mm. Exhibit A. Look at this prick. So that's all they do. Just swim around and they say, people say they're intelligent. I think they're a, a despicable, evil creatures. And so, yeah, I, um, I've got a, a grand plan. In five years, I want to sort of map out where all of the dolphins are, let them feel sort of complacent. And then in 10 years, really go at them, kill them all dead in sort of within a kind of week period. A week? Just over a week, are you, yeah. Are you it's ambitious. It's, and, it's you and a team of celebrities. It, may, it is me and a team of celebrities. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Who, who are they? I thought you might ask. Um, it's, it's, it's a small team of me and uh, Christopher Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just going to go in with, um, with a bolt gun and just do it with a bolt gun. <laughs> but Christopher Biggins... <laughs> But Christopher Biggins said no. Punch. <laughs> Christopher Biggins said no. Punch them. So, uh, so we've agreed to punch all the dolphins to death. Just you two. Just me, me and Christopher. So Biggins. you're swimming around. Is he? Does he hold and you? Or do you? I hold think we'll him? alternate. Okay. So he's holding them back like in a bar. Yeah. And you're just going. He's taking the fins. Yeah, like this. So they're. Yeah. Incapacitated, yeah. and then you just. Wow. We practiced on one and uh, it takes a long time. How long? It was a good hour or so. Per dolphin. <laughs> per, dol per dolphin. We've, yeah, it's, a, it's an ambitious project. It's an ambitious project, but uh, Christopher believes in it more than I do. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. Right, well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm. I'm drugged. <laughs> okay. 
you've tried your hand at quite a few jobs. Um, mm. You were briefly a member of a barbershop quartet as well. What was the... Oh, yes, there we all are. What was the name That's of this? Linda. OK. Um, uh, Linda and um, Barbara. Linda, Linda, Barbara and you. So what, what, what were you called as a, as a quartet? Um, Linda, Linda, Joe and Barbara. Linda, Linda, Joe and Barbara. And you, you toured all over. Well, I mean, if you called Tipton and Swindon all over, then yeah, we had, we had some great shows. OK. The group split, and what happened there? Why? So one of the Lindas, I won't say which one for legal reasons, um, just got a bit punchy one night <clears throat> after one of the shows. Physically punchy? Yeah, physically punchy. And, um, and Barbara, as you can see, Barbara's sort of looking at me because we were sleeping together. And um, turns out, very aggressive lover. And uh, that wasn't my style, so in the end we all just moved on. OK. You also worked at Heathrow Airport, famously. Uh, you were a customs officer. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I um, was. And you were actually responsible for training the sniffer dogs. It's mm. quite amazing. People, people might not know this, that you actually can smell someone's hand and you can work out the last thing they touched. Mm. And you've passed that on to the dogs and, you know, that's what we've got. Let me... Now, yeah. A child's shin. And try the other one. Debbie McGee. <laughs> and it's uh... <laughs> sniffing aside. You took a foray into YouTube a couple of years ago, haven't we all, darling? And you did a YouTube show called Truth Attack, mm. which was actually largely successful. Some people dismiss it as conspiracy theories. You know, a lot of people go down the JFK or the moon landing route. You didn't. You, you, you took a more niche approach. You had quite a controversial theory about Ed Sheeran's tattoos as well. Mm. Well, my theory was that he'd um, employed a, a child to do them, and I still stand by it. Mm. And you can see the results. I mean, some of them are very talented, but some of them less so. Joe, we're almost done on Unreal Lives today. All right. Uh, I just want to do one more thing as a special treat for you. Do you recognise these voices? Hello, Joe. It's us. Oh, Barbara, Linda and Linda. That's right. It's your old barbershop quartet. Barbara, Hello. Barbara. Hi, guys. Hello. I could have swore one of you was black. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you guys. This is great. So you do the whole thing on stage together where you introduce yourself so yeah. go this is linda this is linda this is joe this is barbara oh, no. it's wonderful you never lose it do you no it's really great really you, great joe. great to see you barbara <laughs> tell us a bit about what it was like when the group split up what what happened um gosh it was yeah it was it was hardcore wasn't it guys tough it was, times. It was really time. tough times yeah. have you stopped punching now are you? um I'm not ready to talk about that, I'm afraid. Mm. Well, let's keep it light for the end this. of the show. Um, shall, we, shall we put the past behind you? Or? Well, um, they are all behind me. <laughs> well, it seems like the right time and place to do a little song, I think. Ah, do you remember oh. My Girl? Oh, yeah. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day When it's cold outside I've got the month of May I, I guess you'd say What can make me feel this way My girl Talking about my girl oh, Thank you Thanks guys Special. It was so great I couldn't remember some of it but it was <laughs> Just felt so lovely to be back with these guys. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. A special thank treat you, for Joe. Thanks. And Joe, thank you. It's been unreal. It has. Thank you. <laughs> 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 That's it.